Okay, so we're going to go over vector addition one more time in a way that you can then come back to as often as you need to. We've seen several of these in lecture, in the slides, and on the chalkboard, but this is one more to be able to see that same process in a way that you can pause, rewind, as much as you need to. Okay, so let's start out with one of the ways that we often see our vectors drawn, which is on the same little coordinate system. So we can have one vector, maybe, that's five miles long, and at this angle of 40 degrees. That 40 degrees, as I've drawn it, would be north of east. If we were to draw a little north, east, south, west, because there are going to be times when you are just given the words and a description of 40 degrees north of east and have to draw that on your own. Okay, so we've got five miles for this one. Then if we have a second vector, let's say that that's seven miles at an angle of 15 degrees. And this would be west of south if you were using that same kind of system, west of south. Okay. So the first thing that we want to do any time that we see a vector at an angle is to break it up into components. So we can do this all on this particular image, and in a lot of cases, if it's drawn on the page for you already, that might be the right way to do it. But another way you can do it is just take that arrow, same exact arrow, so same five miles and same 40 degrees, and make a triangle with it. We see that this arrow that we're drawing here points more uh, to the right than to the left, so this piece points to the right, and it points more up than it does down, and so this piece points up. It goes from the very start of that vector to the very end of that vector, the pieces. Okay, so let's call this one A. That would make this A X and this A Y the horizontal component of it and the vertical component of it. Now, if we look at this piece, it's next to this angle here. Next to, we look at our equation sheet, our trigonometry, and it, that means we use the cosine. So we use the full five miles times the cosine of 40 degrees. Okay. For AY, we're going to use the sine. It's opposite. It's as far away from the angles it can get, the opposite. And so that's 5 sine 40 degrees. Okay, so we've taken care of that for now. We can then go over to our other vector. And it doesn't need to be anywhere next to this one. We're just trying to break it up into pieces. So I'm going to draw it up here. Okay, and so it's still the 7 miles long. And we still have this 15 degrees. We see that it points more down than it does up, so this piece points down. We see it points more left than it does right, that piece points left. And so we want to break it up into components the same way. This we'll call B, which means this piece is BX, the horizontal piece of B, and this is BY, the vertical piece of B. 7 is the hypotenuse here. Now we look, this one is the one that's adjacent next to the angle. And so this is where cosine goes for this triangle. And then this is as far away from the angle as possible. It's the opposite. And so we use 7 sine 15 degrees. OK. So now that we have all of those pieces, and we can get number values for that, and I'm going to go off screen briefly, get those numbers, write them down for us. Then we can figure out how we add them together. So two different ways that we'll add them together. Okay. Movie magic. All right. So now that we have all four of these pieces, we want to make sure that we have a sense of what direction they point. I like to write it just right next to it. So that one's pointing to the right. That one's pointing up. This one's pointing to the left. And this one's pointing down. Now there's different ways that you can deal with the pieces once you have them like this. One of the ways that uh, a lot of students like to use is by making a table. So you get the x pieces, 
and the y pieces, and you put them in a table in order to get the totals. So if we look at the x, to the right means positive 3.83, and to the left means negative 1.81, and so we end up with 2.02. For the y's, we have an upwards, so positive 3.21, a downwards negative 6.76, and so we end up with something that ends up being negative, which just means that it's going to be uh, in the downward direction. And so we have a negative 3.55. Okay, so we'll leave that aside for now because that is a way that you can do it, and we'll see how that works um, with getting our final answer. But we've also talked in class about using the head-to-tail method, and I want to make sure we have a sense of what that looks like. So the head-to-tail method says, let's take all of the pieces that we've just built and put them piece by piece next to each other. So we've got 3.83 to the right, and we have 3.21 up. Then we have 1.81 to the left, and we have 6.76 down. What that tells us is that our final vector goes from the very start and to the very end, and it's going to point down and to the right. Now if we come back to our numbers here, that also is something that we were able to tell from the table, that we're to the right, 2.02. .02. So this much is 2.02. .02. Or if I draw it like that, this much is 2.02. .02. And we're told in our little table that we've got negative 3.55. That means 3.55 down. And so this is 3.55. So that's a little bit off to the side, so let me draw it up here, actually probably right here, uh, to be a little bit easier. Because we're almost done. Once we have our vector, which has the two pieces, the positive, positive is what we already um, see by having it point to the right, the 2.02, .02. down already tells us the negative sign, and so it's 3.55. The last things that we need are the angle here and the hypotenuse, or the size of that final vector. Okay, so whether we got it through this, and even if we're just drawing this um, head-to-tail method, we're still thinking in our heads there's 3.83 in one direction, 1.81 in the other direction. So the piece that we have left is that 2.02. .02. So however we get here, we have these numbers. To get the hypotenuse, the size, we need to use the Pythagorean theorem. So to get the size, we need the Pythagorean theorem. Okay. So that tells us a squared plus b squared equals c squared. These are the two smaller sides, so they're a and b. And if we think about taking the uh, square root of both sides, then the only thing we have left here is the size that we're actually looking for, that final value for the size. And so we take the square root of 2.02 .02 squared plus 3.55 squared. You can do that one at home. That's what we're going to have as our sort of final value for the length of the vector. And then to get the angle, we need to use the tangent. So tangent of the angle is opposite over adjacent. And so we look, and from this angle, the 2.022 is opposite and the 3.55 is adjacent. Okay. Now if we look, 
theta is the thing we want all by itself, and so in order to get it by itself, we basically have to take the arc tangent of both sides, the inverse tangent. That will allow us to get theta by itself, and it will cause us to use our arc tangent function on our calculators. And we'll be able to get that final angle as well. And so that will be one of our final numbers. And so the size and the angle and any kind of picture, that's all we need. That's the end result. But it takes several steps that we can't skip over or pass up in order to get to our final vector uh, addition result. All right. So as mentioned, any part of this that doesn't quite make sense, you can rewind, watch it again. You can always come to office hours for either Professor Seablack or I. Uh, and this is something that we want to make sure we think about beyond just test one, beyond the first three um, chapters, because vectors are something that's going to be around for the rest of the course. All right.